The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics has cited the numbers 0 and 1 as benchmarks. Often, all we need to know is whether or not a fraction is close to 0 or close to 1. In this video, you will see the importance of understanding fraction symbols for determining when a fraction is close to 0 and if it's close to 1. Let's begin by finding all the bars that have just one part shaded and place them in decreasing order. So here we have one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, and we go up to one tenth, and one twelfth. And we'll just write the fractions down here for this one half. One third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one tenth, and one twelfth. The shaded amounts of the bars get smaller from top to bottom, and the fractions decrease from one half to one twelfth and get closer to zero. Now, if these bars were continued to bars with 15 parts or 20 parts and one part shaded, their fractions would be less than these fractions here and even closer to zero. I once did this activity with fourth graders and they wanted to go further to bars with a hundred pats, bars with a thousand pats, and one student suggested a bar with a million pats. They were fascinated by the fact that the fractions for these bars would get closer and closer to zero but never equal zero. From such observations students would be able to determine inequalities for unit fractions. That's fractions with a numerator of 1, and explain their reasoning. So let's look, for example, at 1 eighth and 1 fifth. Okay, which fraction is closer to 0? Now this, uh, the bar for this fraction is going to have 8 parts and 1 part shaded, and those parts are going to be smaller than the bar for this fraction here. So this fraction 1 eighth is less than 1 fifth, one eighth is closer to zero. And we'll start with one half, two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, five sixths, nine tenths, and eleven twelfths. So let's just put their fractions down here one half, two thirds, three fourths, Four fifths, five sixths, nine tenths, and uh, finally here eleven twelfths. So the shaded amounts of the bars increase, and these fractions increase from one half to eleven twelfths and get closer to one. Now some students might notice the unshaded parts of these bars. These are getting smaller and smaller and closer to zero. This is an important observation for determining inequalities of fractions such as these where the numerator is one less than, than the denominator. For example, let's look at uh, the fraction 7 eighths and uh, 14 fifteenths. Which fraction is uh, closest to 1? Now the bar for this fraction here has 8 parts and 7 parts are shaded, so that's missing just 1 part, 1 eighth. The bar for this fraction has 15 parts, and 14 are shaded, so this is missing a 1 15th of being all shaded, to being a whole bar, and 1 15th is less than 1 8th, so this fraction right here is closer, closer to 1. The Tower of Bars mat from the Fraction Bars materials has blank bars that can be used to model fractions for halves, thirds, fourths, down to twelfths. Fraction bars can be placed on this mat or students can color or shade these bars to illustrate or discover relationships. For example, every other bar can be half shaded to show fractions that are equal to one half. Similarly, Every third bar can be shaded 
to represent fractions equal to one third. And we could shade every fourth bar to show that one fourth was equal to two eighths, which is equal to three twelfths. This mat has two parts of each bar shaded. At least we've started that way, two parts out of three. Modeling two fourths here, two fifths, two sixths. And this shows, if you wanted to continue shading this, at least it could be generalized that if you have a fraction with a fixed numerator of two, and the denominators increase, the fractions are going to decrease. And this could be generalized to fractions having a fixed numerator. As the denominators increase, the fractions will decrease. Another relationship students could indicate is to show that as fractions with a fixed numerator of 1 and the denominators increase from 2 down to 12, the shaded amounts decrease and the fractions decrease and get closer to 0. And we can also show increasing sequence of fractions now. 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, so forth down to 11 twelfths. These fractions uh, get closer and closer to 1. Now students might notice that the tower bars is symmetric about a center line. The left half can be folded over to coincide with the right half. For example, these bars have been shaded here. We have the uh, unit fractions decreasing from 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so forth down to 1 twelfth. Now the red shaded amount also represents 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, down to 1 twelfth. And other relationships can be determined by considering symmetry. The decreasing amounts of these red shaded parts can be used to show the increasing sequence of fractions get closer and closer to 1. We can use the idea we were just looking at. Now we know that these red shaded amounts decreased, get closer to 0. Since they're used to complete these bars, so we have whole bars right here, since these are decreasing to zero, these shaded amounts are increasing and getting closer to one. In this video, the decreasing shaded amounts of the bars provides a strong visual image that as a number of equal parts increase, the fractions for one of these parts decrease and get closer and closer to zero. Similarly, the shaded amounts of increasing bars is another strong visual image, showing that fractions whose numerators are one less than their denominators get closer and closer to one as the number of equal parts increase. Here are eight more of the 16 games on FractionBars.com. Let's look at hitting asteroids. One of the two options for this game is benchmark one half. This game provides practice for determining whether a fraction is less than, equal to, or greater than one half. In hitting asteroids, we will select the benchmark one half option and then select beginner. The player is given a fraction to compare to one half in types less than or equal or greater than and clicks the mouse. Sorry, this player is a beginner. <laughs> okay, well, we didn't. They know you're not a beginner. <laughs>